There's not a market in the country that doesn't have an affordable housing challenge. It seems to only get worse by the year um, and by the day. It's a challenge that is going to take a lot of investment, a lot of time, and a lot of people putting their thinking hats on trying to come up with solutions. Over the last 10 or 20 years, there's been very little production in all spectrums of, of housing, and multifamily is a big chunk of that. Um, and as demographics have changed and you've got an aging baby boomer population, along with uh, an economic cycle that is more likely to have people relocate and move, I think people need to be more flexible with where they live. And multifamily's been beneficiary of that in a sense, but it's also hurt the supply side uh, as the economy wasn't allowing a lot of production and now we're paying for that. It's still a supply and demand problem. And people like to say we can't build our way out of it. Um, I tend to argue that a little bit from your Econ 101. If you're not building enough and there's excess demand, you're gonna have pressure on prices. Rents are outpacing incomes and you're having that pressure on prices and you don't have the production to, to keep up with it. So I think focusing again back to that production side of the discussion and really building some supply and building it while the economy can do it. Um, the interest rates are historically low and that allows even more private leveraging and private investment than, than uh, a typical economic cycle. trying to do ground up affordable housing, it can take three years to get to the doors opening where people are moving in, and that's if everything's going well. The private sector develops about 70% of the affordable housing in the country. Developers don't get a lot of sympathy um, on having a, a tough job, but it is a tough job. Um, the challenges are real. Not only do you gotta find a site that's large enough to do a, a project that has some scale to it to get some economies, need a seller who's willing to give you nine months to a year to close while you go through the entitlement process. We all know that a lot of people like affordable housing and want it. Not everyone wants it near them. So there's challenges there in getting a site entitled and zoned. And then if you do get through that process, now you've got to go get the federal resources that, that you need to provide the, the tax credits and equity into financing affordable housing development. Uh, then you got to go to a financing partner who's willing to lend you money and invest with you for 15 to 20 years. You got to close on that, find a contractor, design a set of plans. It is a very complicated uh, process. It's really not for the faint of heart, um, and it's not without risk. In affordable housing, I think there is a push to give people dignity where they live, make them proud where they come home, and building market rate quality affordable housing is a big key to that and having it blend in the neighborhood. And that's not the most cost effective way to do it necessarily, but you're also building product that will last longer, that is better to maintain and people really have a lot of pride in. People have had a son or daughter, a relative, a parent who struggled to pay rent. And so I think more and more people are touched by it. There's a lot of touching points for people that are getting them to realize that, hey, this is something that's needed. So there's a growing acceptance. Um, there's a YIMBY movement of yes in my backyard, uh, and people saying this is something we need to do. Do it wherever you can, and we're seeing less and less NIMBYism. It's good to see that shift in Minnesota against it and for affordable housing. The federal program's great. It does a lot to provide affordable housing across the country but it only provides about 30% of the capital necessary to build an affordable apartment community. And the rest is really leveraging private sector dollars and investment to do it. So it's a great program, but there's, there's a lot of private money that's born with it. And it's not enough in most cases to build an affordable housing community. There's usually some other resource that's going to bear to help the sector and the industry build that house or build that apartment community. Uh, you need more and it's a challenge right now in, in a budget constrained uh, world with legislators having to balance between different needs to, 
to get them to think big and say, we really have to invest. We work in about half the states in the country in producing and renovating and saving affordable housing. And there are models out there that states are bringing to bear um, to assist and supplement the federal resource that likely isn't going to significantly grow. So states are stepping up and uh, providing incentive and providing uh, ways to get additional investment into affordable housing. And a very common one that we see in Colorado and Texas are examples that they effectively exempt affordable housing from paying property taxes. Now that's a burden on, on state budgets, but they've said this is a way we can leverage additional private investment. Um, Arizona recently passed a state tax exemption for affordable housing. Uh, Florida's considering the same. There's one in the legislation right now being considered. Um, Georgia, for example, has a state low-income housing tax credit that mirrors the federal program. And that's really pushed up production in Georgia. Now they quickly have, have gone to using all of the federal resources that they get for affordable rental housing production. So there are policies that can be put into place that don't directly cost money for legislatures, but allow the private in investment to come in and really maximize rental housing production. And Minnesota is not one of those states. And so we need policymakers and a lot of that's constituents to say this is important. Uh -huh.